That is spectacular. I mean, you do not see that kind of thing every single day. Yes, my dear, you've put your face so beautifully into the light. Thank you. We are most appreciative of your efforts on our behalf. Ah, it's always at times like this that I feel that maybe everything is right with the world. <laughs> no matter how we as human beings do our level best to muck things up, here are the leopards doing their level best to show us that no matter how hard we try, we will never quite be able to muck things up entirely. Lynn, you're wondering if there are any leopards starting to sort of take over Karula's territory. The answer is yes, and you're looking at her. She's not in Karula's old territory yet, but she certainly has been in Karula's old territory, and she's spent quite a lot of time making forays up into the southern parts of Juma, which she didn't used to do before. It wasn't something she did before, and so what's happening now is that just slowly, slowly, you'll find that Karula's territory will start to close out. So it'll be not invaded, but it will be incurred upon from different sides. And um, what was I going to say there? As it's incurred upon, or as it's in, these incursions happen, they'll happen from not only from the south and east, which is where she's coming from, but I think you'll find that Shadow, for example, from the west, will also start to spend time here. Tristan was mentioning Tiani, of course, who is a young male lep or young female leopard, uh, three years old, daughter of Salayeshe, looking for a territory. She could easily find that vacant. Um, and I think those are the three main candidates. Shongile is still a little bit young to be taking a territory, but it's not impossible that she could set up residence around here as well. Or well, not around here, but around where her mother was. That would be most appropriate though, wouldn't it? I always think that these things look so uncomfortable, these trees. She's just watching for young Tamba. All right, I think he started to snack on this kill. Shall we head around that way, Ferg? <laughs> Perhaps she like, didn't like the tickle of the grass on her belly or something like that. Maybe that's why she decided being up there is the best place to be. Really, you are spoiled when you've got to decide, should we be with the one leopard or the other leopard? It's amazing also to me how much like her sister she looks. She looks very similar to Shadow. She's got that slightly um, shortened snout. And it's a little bit, yeah, there he is, he's eating. It's a, just a little bit sort of um, wrinkly, if you know what I mean. Hello, boy. Let's go around this side. Hello, Bill. You're wondering on the method of murder that a leopard employs in order to find its meals? Bill, what it does, it, there are two methods, two main methods. The first, let me just get around here, Bill, and then I will address your question. The first, Bill, with a small kill, like a rat or a bird or something like that would be to grab it and bite it on the back of the head and biting it on the back of the head um, will then snap the spine and kill it immediately however something the size of the impala here how's that is that right something the size of the impala bill they will ambush jump on the back 
and then slide around to the throat and throttle the animal while kicking viciously with their back feet and their claws. But it becomes, when the mass of the prey in question is greater than their own mass, they must try and throttle the thing. So they grab it by the throat and suck, or not suck, grab it by the throat and sort of crush the windpipe. I think he's going to go up the tree. Because they're not big enough to break the spine like they would with smaller things. Come on, fella, up you go. And Louise in the final control would like to know, has he been using his mother's lipstick? Um, Louise, he has. It's nothing to be alarmed about. Young male leopards often use their mother's lipstick. And yes, that is certainly why he's, you see, he knows now he's been cuffed. was of course blood that Louise was talking about. Leopards don't wear lipstick. Not even the females. Yes. He does look a little bit like Eddie Izzard. Maybe he would maybe he will wear lipstick one day. William, you're wondering how much food a leopard eats every day. William, that is not a question that is answerable because a leopard might not eat every day. They, this kill you'll probably find will last the two of them a good four days. And, you know, this leopard probably weighs... Well, he's about the same as his mother now, so let's call him about 40 kilograms. And 40 kilograms or so, in one sitting, they can probably eat a teen between 10 and 15 percent of their body mass so he can probably eat between four and uh, sort of four and six kilograms of meat per sitting if he wanted to isn't this wonderful Elizabeth, I think you might have the wrong end of the stick slightly here. You say, do two female leopards fight each other in the same way for a territory that males would? Elizabeth, just about all leopards will avoid all forms of confrontation if they can. Yes, they do have conflict over territory, the females, but they don't fight each other. They don't, um, uh, you know, they don't have vicious biting and clawing fights that's very unusual yes it does happen from time to time but it's not common it's really quite unusual for it to happen and I suppose it might happen slightly more with the males than it does with the females but by and large all of the male conflicts that I have seen have been two males lying next to each other growling for hours on end and then they leave each other alone they very, it very seldom escalates into actual violence because they're both very powerful, very strong, with very sharp weapons, and they will do horrendous damage to each other. And so their whole territorial sort of modus operandi, if you like, is to avoid competition, to scent mark, to say, this is where I am, don't come near me, and to make that loud sawing roar at night in order to let the others know where they are and then if they aren't territorial to not make any kind of sign of their presence. Lions are slightly different. Conflict with each other. But leopards will try and avoid it. And females the same and they might, I mean you know, the male fights happen seldom, and I think you'll find female fights probably happen slightly less frequently even. But, uh, you know, they're by and large, you will 
unlikely to see a huge physical fight between two territorial male or female leopards. Very nice that his mother's provided this meal for him. Very nice also that we've been able to spend this amount of time with them. Alrighty, we're going to sit here and let him carry on eating. In the meantime, Tristan has uh, left his dwarf mongoose. I don't know what he's looking for now. Well, we did leave our dwarf mongoose because we had reports of a lion.